I think there's Republican and Democrat concern about the power that's being used by social media outlets. In our divided country, there still seems to be one issue everyone agrees on. The internet is a problem. Thank you very much. We're here today to defend free speech from one of the gravest dangers it has faced in American history, frankly. Former President Donald Trump felt big tech companies censored content too much, and the Biden administration thinks they moderate too little. But they're unified in thinking something's got to give. And that something is Section 230, a piece of legislation you may not understand yet, but have probably heard of by now. The repeal of Section 230. Section 230 status. Section 230. Section 230. Section 230. Section 230. Section 230. To understand Section 230, you have to understand what the world was like before it was passed in 1996. And um, what you have to look at is what was the liability of companies that distribute other people's content. So before the internet, that was mainly bookstores and newsstands. And the general rule under the common law of the First Amendment is that a distributor is only liable for someone else's content if it knew or had reason to know of the illegal content. So a bookstore could be liable for selling an obscene book if it knew that the book was obscene. This worked fine up until the early 1990s, when it became clear that the rise of the internet would require a new set of rules about liability and content regulation. Lawmakers tried to take care of this in 1996 by passing the Communications Decency Act in an attempt to regulate pornographic material online. A year later, most of it was struck down for violating the First Amendment, but Section 230 stuck. So what Section 230 says is that the person who posted content online is the one who is legally responsible for it. And the platform where they posted it, in most cases, will not be legally responsible for that content. It's not just big tech companies that rely on Section 230. It is any company that operates a website or an app or any other online platform that takes user content. In fact, bigger tech companies, with their massive bank accounts and teams of lawyers, would weather changes to 230 more easily. But smaller companies are at risk, which could cause a huge range of problems, not just for their sites, but for society at large. The web is ephemeral and it changes constantly. And in fact, we know that um, the lifespan of a web page before it either changes or is deleted is only 100 days. And without the Internet Archive, without the Wayback Machine, those things could be lost forever. Leela Bailey is a lawyer for the Internet Archive, a nonprofit library whose entire collection is online. A straight up repeal of CDA 230 would lead to all kinds of legal uncertainty. As the Internet Archive, we would have to spend a tremendous amount of resources just trying to figure out how we could exist. Libraries are places that house some of those unconventional, sometimes controversial, you know, books and materials. A lot of our collections might might have to be, you know, basically, quote, taken off our digital shelves. One just very recent example comes to mind here, and that is Donald Trump's tweets. Twitter made a particular decision about the fact that they felt like his tweets were causing some kind of harm. And they removed not just the tweets that were causing harm, but his whole account. We felt it was very important to have a record of what the former president of the United States had said on Twitter. So we have an archive of Donald Trump's tweets. Now, under a repealed Section 230, it's possible that those materials might have to just disappear. But some people want that material, which was responsible for radicalizing hundreds of thousands of Americans to face stronger moderation in the future. People who are very upset about what happened on January 6th in terms of our capital being stormed, a lot of them trace that problem back to what's happened on various platforms. And they also see immediacy. So I think January 6th really, on both sides, 
made the Section 230 issue even more prominent than it already had been. While no one has agreed on exactly what to do with Section 230, in early February, a group of Democrats presented a possible solution. Their proposal, the Safe Tech Act, would give internet users more legal options if tech companies fail to stop discrimination, cyberstalking, or harassment on their platforms. Part of that act specifies that Section 230 protections don't apply to ads or paid content, meaning platforms can get sued for paid materials that show up on their sites, which sounds pretty straightforward, but could create problems for services like Patreon and Etsy, who could be sued for a newsletter or the sale of a t-shirt. I think the point here is that really a one-size-fits-all legal regime will almost certainly lead to a one-size-fits-all internet, right? It'll look a lot more like television um, than it looks like the internet as we know it today with, you know, all the different kinds of communities and debates and things that we see online. A lot of that stuff would probably get stripped away. 